Good to see you, Hunter. We are here at the South Cliff Lodge at Whiteheart Island, and this is an, an exquisite place for whitetail hunting. You might have seen my beginner's guide where I was also here for the whitetails, and it's not a coincidence because here you can really find many, many whitetails here in, on the southern island, and especially when you start here at this lodge, many whitetails and only a few elks that will be around, and as you go further up, there will also be coyotes. So I want to take you here on a hunt. I will roam around and I will look for white tails only. Of course, if we get uh, come across any elk, we might as well harvest one of those as well. First of all, as far as the uh, weapons, I will bring the seven millimeter Bouquetin, how it's called. Then I also bring the reverse crossbow. It's a very nice weapon. I've got it equipped with the scope. And I also bring the stallion, this new revolver. I might, might use it on elk. I cannot use it on whitetails. But I want to mostly focus on hunting the whitetails with the reverse draw crossbow because it's a silent weapon. You can take out animals. If you drop them on the spot, if, it, if they don't flee, then even any bystanders will not spook if they're not too close. Nine out of ten times at least the first call here will be a white tail. There is more does around than bucks, but um, sooner or later you will come across the bucks. I've had hunts here where the first three animals have been white tail bucks. So it can, uh, it can get quite busy. Actually, the other day I was hunting here as well. I was calling all the time. And I ended up being surrounded by four white tails. They came from all the sides. That's very normal if you sneak around, if you call a lot. Sooner or later you will draw them in. I've signed up for a competition, King of the Whitetail, which is basically harvest the largest buck. So maybe if we find a nice buck, we might even rank somewhere in the top 10, but it needs, it needs to be a really good buck. There also used to be competitions for females, uh, for whitetail females, but those are gone. Lady in White was it called. There's not too many female competitions and this one is one of those that was dropped at some point. It was basically who found the uh, largest female, the, the heaviest female. Like said, there is more females than males. I think it's like a 3 to 2 ratio. So in case you hunt any specific animals, deer for example, if there's females around, take them, shoot them silently, level up your guns or your other weapons, increase your sneaking abilities and shooting abilities with those as well, and the bucks will come. You cannot miss them. Sometimes I mark the animal on the map, especially bucks, and sometimes I just try to remember where it was. The females, the white-tailed does, are not very sensitive. They will hear and see you when you're pretty close. There's another one. She will be attracted. Let me just set the volume up just to make sure. It's going to be okay on the video. So here's our first doe. 
The dots on this scope are 20, 40, 60 and 80 meters. It's pretty hard to miss, especially this close. And many animals, even the largest ones, will drop on the spot if you hit them from this close especially and if you hit them well. This was a long shot. You can see the very bright blood and I would guess even double lungs. Yes, you can see the very bright red uh, symbol here, then it's double lungs. And remember, once you start calling, you work a little bit like a magnet. So be aware of the environment. Don't run around, you might still walk around. But running will be, of course, devastating. You will spook everything. We might have a buck coming already, we don't know. There's this tower where I shot the white tail buck in the video in the beginner's guide. It's a good place. Usually you cannot make it there before you get a call. You will get a call sooner. Uh, but you can go there, you can call in the open, you can use scent spray and see what's coming. But I usually don't make it there before I get the first calls. When I do hunts like this, I really call a lot. I probably overcall. Just want to make sure the animals are constantly coming. <sighs> the reverse draw crossbow is stronger than the python, for example, but it's still rather silent. It's certainly more silent than the normal crossbow with a 10 point and certainly more silent than the snake bites the snake bite bows you can see the damage that it does again this is a very close shot but uh, with the does you can do this you can take them very close take them out silently no risk for them running away spooking anything I kind of hurried up because I had this call and I hurried up to take it out as soon as possible because the game gives you calls every now and then there is no set timer but, but it's it's every few minutes it, it'll give you a call from an animal that's close so I, I hurried up to take this out before it calls again hoping that there will be another white tail call very soon. There's another tower over there on the west side. Here we have a buck. I can tell by the weight. Sorry about that. You can see it's a dropping. It doesn't tell you the gender, but it's 70 to 90 kilograms. That will be a buck. Bucks go up to 100 kilograms. The does go up to 59 kilograms. Another doe calling. I don't mind taking those out. The less you have of those, the sooner the bucks will come will be around. This is the same buck. All the track. This is a newer track, so we're kind of going into that direction now. Seventy to ninety kilograms is not a buck I would follow. 
if your tracking level is still low i would recommend to uh, level up on that level on that tracking skill because the weight gives you some indication there can be big bucks with just 90 kilograms they don't have to be almost 100 but if it's 70 to 90 then it'll be a rather smaller buck and not likely high score I actually checked the leaderboards and really the, the, the top bucks were all around 90, 92 kilograms. So th that really confirms it doesn't have to be a very, very heavy buck. I brought the rifle just in case I want to do a longer shot. But really I'm not planning to do any if I don't have to. Like said, you start working like a magnet here. You draw everything in and you kind of destroy it with a gunshot. The downside is at some point you can almost not move <laughs> because everything around you is crawling. So even if you, uh, you end up spooking something anyway, it's not, it's not the end of the story, it's not the end of the day. There's a female. Oh, right here. Hello. Well, you can see I was sneaking here and she has no clue I'm around. Look at how close this is. You can walk up to the doors rather quickly, sneak in. Certainly you can go close. Let's check out the map. I got a tent up here as well, a tower that I set up there. If you're interested, there is a video where I actually shot a an albino and a 190 something scoring. They were both in the same place. Really amazing. And here is the first buck calling. The second buck we come around, the tracks were from another one. So this is the effect, very typical. You make a lot of calls and you get a lot of answers. Sooner or later they will be there. As mentioned before, you can find elk down here. But um, if you're a whitetail hunter, this is the place to go. There's few elks. Even if they're there, you can ignore them. You can take some out. The place is still full of white tails. Always remember to to charge your bow, your crossbow, because you have to be up kneeling to to uh, pull the uh, the string back. And that's quite annoying if you're in front of an animal lying on the, on the ground and then you have to pull back the string. You get up and the animal will see you. We must be pretty close already. Thank you. Very cooperative, the White Hills here. <laughs> and let's make sure we spot it. This is always the most important. So in case you spook it, you know whether it's worth going after. very big advantage of the crossbows is you can lay flat on the ground shoot them safely also have the scopes 
So these are killer weapons. Oh, there he is. Wow, good score. 160 to 185. Beautiful rack. Nice. You don't get these big bucks when you shoot your weapons, your guns. This is a very first, a very nice first kill here. 166, that's a great score for a first buck. What you need to consider here, I wanted to mention that it's, it's rather important. This is an island and you have the shores and always when you come close to shores, especially when you follow animals, Remember, they will turn around and come your way. So remember the buck we had before going west? He could be well on his way back towards us. Actually, he's not. <laughs> he's now going north. We just found the track. He has turned north. But once these animals hit the uh, shores or any other borders, you have no idea where they will go. They could come right back at you. In fact, last night hunting coyotes at Loggers Point, I followed one and it walked straight back into me. I spooked it again, so I know what I'm talking about. Here's another doe. Looking at the clock, 9.34, remember the time in the game is double the time that you experience in real life. So we're in 17 minutes into the game three does and one buck down and no stress on the map no gunshots no running so far it's been rather quiet hunting and quite a few animals down already there's our buck the 70 to 90 kilogram buck i would not expect it to be very large There's really only few trophy bucks among all those that are around. If you're a new hunter or rather new, don't get discouraged. I also get a lot of questions. How can I find a non-typical? Please take me to a hunt. I want to find one and there's really no way to, to predetermine what you're going to find. All the trophy bucks, all the non-typicals, all the rares they're just luck and there's only so f so many in in 1000 bucks if you will so hunt them go after them many times and you will be rewarded and i can tell you if you spend a few nights and you finally find this trophy buck it's a lot more rewarding than if you could just go out all the time and shoot your trophy bucks there would simply be no trophy at all anymore Oh, this guy's over here and now we spooked it so all the talking i haven't focused on the buck as much as i should have but anyway like I said this was a, uh, a lightweight Oh well. Of course in the open when you move around even the smaller animals can see you. I like this place a lot also because of the many woods, of the many trees. Not too many open patches. That's ideal for white tails. They come rather close, they walk in nicely. You can wait behind a tree. You can lay down on roots. There's the next. And you can hide behind behind other ops, uh, objects. The open places are a few open 
uh, like meadows like this or the road and right now the buck has seen me across the road we'll pay more atten attention to this one for some reason going south of south cliff at the beginning doesn't serve any anything there is not much there it's a bit of lost space there i don't know why the spawning map doesn't extend there Trying to listen if I hear anything. And now I should crawl. And if the timing works out, we should meet at the road. Many rocks you cannot climb on top of. It's a bit of a bummer. But almost all the routes you can get up. You, st you still have to be careful that they don't see you. This one works out. There's the buck, rather small, but also small weight. So when you find these types, then remember everyone has those. Getting closer to the uh, little lakes here and to where I have the tent, we will soon also get coyotes. And these guys are really sneaky. You cannot just crouch up to them. You have to be very careful. Especially since they come in packs, they come rather quick. Very good eyesight, very good smelling. It's always males and females, so the males are a bit better as far as sensing you. crossbow is really a lot of fun very few times where you don't drop the animals from closer distances
It's also getting more narrow here because of the water. So animals crossing here will be... They only have a few places where they can cross. So we have to be more careful here. I have the tower there for a reason. Where is it? Over there? It's there for a reason. It's a place where animals need to go by when they switch between the upper and lower part from this, uh, this island. There's a tent and the tower is there behind the trees. If you want to do elk hunting here, then of course you can use the collar to see if they respond to it. Elks will respond to your call with a good um, probability. They might actually not respond, but if there's a few, then one of them will certainly respond to you. The white tails don't respond. So you cannot locate the box or uh, the deer with the collar, with the um, grunt call and bleed call, but you can locate elk with the um, with the elk collar. I don't want to do that now because A, I'm not after them, and B, I don't want to lure them towards me. By the way, the call just came in, and did you hear that little beep on the hunter mate? It goes steadily. That is a new call. That's a new buck. Had I tracked this buck before, it would just go, it would just blink, but not do the little sound. When it calls the next time, hopefully it'll do that again. Then I can show you the difference. The same is true when you pick up tracks on the ground. If you see the track ahead of us, this is a new track. Even if it's from an animal that we've tracked before, I have not r uh, read this very track here. So we'll, you will get the little beep on the hunter mate. I can show you. Now listen. That's the beep. And when I read it, another buck. The next time I read the track, or the next time I come over the track, it'll not beep anymore. There is no beep now. So that means that's a track I've already read. So whenever you're in a tower or whenever you're waiting for something and you hear a call, if you hear the beep, you know instantly this is a new buck, this is a new animal, whatever calls. <coughs> so yes, let's make use of this tower if we have it here already. We can see tracks as well. And I think, well, it's a buck, I'd say a uh, deer. Let's see what that is. It must be one we've had. There was no beep now. So it's the one, it's the same buck that just called before. And you have noticed there was no beep on the hunter mate, just the blinking on the left button. That is a buck we've read the track from before. So anyway, hit this one is a deer track. You can see the tracks, the black dots behind, the, uh, below the arc. And I would even guess it's a doe based on the size. That's another indication. Looking at the track sizes, well, let's go look. Because the buck is still up there in the woods. Sometimes you're tracking an animal, you see other tracks and you don't want to pick that up because you don't want to lose your current track. 
at least you can look at the size of the footprints and you should be able to say the, di the difference between box and those hear the beep that's something we haven't tracked before and I would say it's large enough for a buck let's guess here it's a doe so I have no clue myself <laughs> what the size of the footsteps are but maybe with the deer it's not a big difference there's other animals like bears and also coyotes the difference is big enough what's a bit tricky though is when the footsteps are on a hillside like this they appear bigger because imagine the prints are done from uh, done vertically onto the ground and the steeper the hill the larger the footsteps and that's my ex uh, excuse for being wrong <laughs> so anyway quick summary here 1002 that's one hour in the game 30 minutes 31 minutes and we've had clues from probably 10 deer already some of which we've harvested three does and two bucks one buck we spooked so you can tell there's a lot going on here and just to make sure I haven't started here a couple of times and I'm not showing you the best video I decided to make a video and this is it this is the one video so that's really true there is mostly white tails here and I call these wi white tails idiots <laughs> because they have no antlers sorry they have it has nothing to do with their intelligence but when I see one of those, I call it an idiot. But don't tell anyone. Let's do a longer shot actually with the crossbow. This is about 40 meters. It's the green dot. And you can see the buck drops crazy weapon incredible successful weapon I think one of the best ones in the game even if you're not a bow hunter even if you just like that bang with your gun consider this thing either this or the Par Parker Python let's look at the distance it'll be somewhere between 30 and 40 meters 31 meters no problems to drop it but now we're definitely getting into elk and coyote country I put a tree stand up there, you can see it on the hunter mate now. Why don't we go there? It's just on the side of a little open area. It's a good place for calling in animals. And the timing might be about right. The last call has been a while. The next call should come soon. There it is and the tree stand is just next to it so this will work because it's a doe I will actually continue to walk if the doe moves my way or moves towards the tree stand we might spook it otherwise we'll make it into the tree stand lure it over And really this is relaxed hunting. I have no stress at any time. I walk or sneak around. I don't feel like animals are bumping into me or I have to be careful, especially because of all the trees here. I know if there's any animals closer, 
they they will sooner hear me than uh, see me unless I get somewhere in the open it's moving rather quickly south so here's a new one so I will call it or start calling it to make sure it turns around and of course always with the hope that there will be any other ones in the area There's not too many places in the game that are so exquisite, so exclusive, I would say around Darkwood Lodge, all the way from the lodge to the eastern side. It's exclusive for a Roosevelt Elk, then maybe the northwest of Hemeldal is good for Moose. And then maybe the north of Whitetail also for Blacktails, but then that's about it for for areas that are so one-sided with the animals. And this place here around Southcliff going north is really, really the place for Whitetail hunters to be. If you're a stand hunter, then uh, consider the sprays. You will be surprised once you start using sprays because of how long they last. The call has a certain uh, time while, while it tracks, but the sprays just last longer. And passing animals might might miss your call, but once they get called by the spray, they will come in. So the doe is now going to the first call there. So this is my little tree stand here. It's um, not so much because of the area, because of the setup here, but actually more it's uh, strategically placed because I have a lot of calls here from, from all, s uh, all species here, elk, coyotes, whitetails. Oh, there's two ones behind me. You can lean forward, hit the X, look around. And still not see it. <laughs> Let's go the other way here. Oh, there she is. So I have two those now. And I should shoot one of them soon. Ah, uh, just behind the tree. Let's try this. Nope, then I cannot see her. Forty meters should be perfect, actually. into the tree stand there she is still behind the tree let's just measure I want to give you a number what is the minimum spooking range if there's a dumb animal around <laughs> so so this doe is maybe at 40 meters, maybe she was at 45. I shot her sister and she doesn't have a clue. So just one more.
proof for the crossbow. There she is. I shot her at 40 meters. And this one doesn't know anything about it. With the box, this might have run. I would not have done this if this was a buck. Well, she sure takes her time. And she turns around. That is just rude. <laughs> Well, if she doesn't come to me, I'll go to her. She spends a lot of energy for calling, she should walk. You can see I'm crouching, crouching, crouching. She doesn't sense me. going to switch arrows because if you run out of arrows the next time you start to hunt it'll not be there the pack of arrows will not be there once you go to zero so I, I keep one next time I start a hunt it'll still be there it'll refill What have we got here? Another dough. Well, like I said, you need to weed through the doughs in order to get to the box. That's part of the game. However, you can increase your skills with the doughs just nicely. So I wouldn't be surprised if now next call is not from a white tail because the other species are here. There are spawn maps when you start a game. Animals will spawn in certain areas. It's not like you can go here and you will... Uh, there is another though. It's not like you can go here and there will be no coyotes and the next time there will be 50. There's a rather stable distribution throughout all the games. Just you don't know where they are. Maybe a little side information. Uh, here's the coyotes. When you start a hunt, the game simulates the animals roaming around. So they originate somewhere on the map and then they move around. And this ensures that you have a completely different game every time and it really works it's not just a theory I've done hundreds of hunts actually I've probably done thousands of hunts and it really works if you come here if you do 10 hunts every single hunt will be different so of course you find the same animals but you don't find them in the same spots you don't find them clustered the same way 
some elk herds are maybe two bulls then there's a herd of five bulls you cannot tell ahead of the game when th where they will be disrupts standing up the more animals you hit with the weapons the higher your shooting skill and the higher your shooting skill you can see that on your website when you look at your hunter profile you can go up to 20 and 20 means you have a lot more stable weapons it means for the bows, for the vertical bows, like the Parker and the snake bite, that you can hold them in full draw for longer. And we just spooked something. That's the effect of calling, like mentioned. Maybe you're a bit more patient than I am. You can sneak around and call, and if you stay sneaking, then it gets really busy. But I tend to get up and walk and that's what happens. We spooked a doe and we don't care. So as far as the shooting skill, it doesn't have to be a kill shot, it doesn't have to be a successful shot as soon as you hit an animal it'll go one step up in your shooting skill and then level up slowly Actually, I'm going to work on these elks here. I wish I could demonstrate now with the crossbow how you can really take out the whole herd. I know I talk a lot about the other day, but um, I've had a hunt here recently. I took out four does in one herd and five does in the other herd in the same hunt. Within a few minutes, they were all gone all thanks to the crossbow. I was in the middle of them. I'm not sure if this one saw me or another one. But anyway. Of course this is rare that you can take out the whole herd, but... Um, it works. It also needs the uh, elk to come in one by one. If they're in a group like this, sooner or later they will be too close and, and spook. 
Anyway, we're after white tails. I'm gonna do a random call. I don't do that too often. But again, you wanna be a magnet for white tails. Call as much as you can. There's a tower up here and I've only a few times found use for that. Somehow it's not well placed. It's on a hill and on all sides somehow it's it's not ideal to to lure animals. Maybe on the west side when they come from above but otherwise it's not one of those towers where you, where you go like, oh, gr oh gr great, there's a tower now, I can use that. She's on the road, literally. What have we got here? Those are the elk. The good point about taking out the elk, apart from leveling up stuff, is also you get rid of the tracks. Every animal that leaves the map will also cause all its traces to be erased, which makes it easier to find the rest. This is one of those games where you feel like this is full of those. Where's the box? We've only shot three so far. We spooked one. But it's been full of, of females. There she is. First one that run first one that runs away. But not likely very far. Long shot, but only single long. Double long shots will cause instant death of many animals. The large ones can still run, but also not very for very long.
This is another one of those narrow passages. Any animal here would sense me now and run away, so not ideal, but I want to gain ground here. The next though, Now we can see the dome. Animals that are hit with an arrow will die in the game sooner or later. If it's a body shot and it's only really really badly hit, then it'll take a very long time. And if you run out of time, then actually you will, <laughs> it'll not die because it doesn't have enough time. But in theory, it would die. Whereas if you hit animals badly with guns, they will continue to live. If you hit them and you have a few blood tracks and they never go below 50%, then they will simply survive, no matter how long you wait. That's another advantage of of the bows, they are silent. This one is rather easy to use and the arrow will kill the animal sooner or later. The only downside is it takes a bit longer to load and there are situations where you cannot load it quickly enough. Here is a buck rather close and he was running. As far as the timing, this might have been when, well, he might have, he must have seen the, the doe that was running. So the bad shot on the female caused this buck to run away. But it's lightweight. 65 to 80. Probably another idiot. The place up here is a bit less busy than the south and it's also known for a good place for coyotes. So I will go over west. You can tell they are here, yet another white tail female oh great so we have one more buck up in the north rather easy to remember just north of the pond probably just getting ready to go to the beach there So we're reaching the top of this southern island and this will be our last white tail here for this video. The purpose was to show you a good place for white tails, a good place for leveling your weapons, for honing your skills and for finding white tail bucks. 
And again, go a few times. Don't be discouraged by a bad hunt. You will be surprised by the variations in your sessions. And of course, when you hear a buck, always think of it as being a great trophy. And of course, then take the required caution. Another doe. But we will never meet. This buck will be our last. I see this uh, root here. So I will use this as my shooting stand. I'm going north, which also means I'm upwind of the buck. So I have to be especially careful. There he is. Oh wow, that's another nice rack. One of those basket racks. And again, scoring above 155. This time I'm using the 7 millimeter. <sighs> and this white tail is gonna sleep with the fishes tonight. The other one was, how much was it? 166, I believe. This one looks like the twin brother and is 160. Alrighty. So this concludes this little video. I hope you liked it. This is a good white tail place. Come here, check it out. Thank you very much. Stay in touch.